the water cycle. Water has been around for billions of years. When the first fish crawled out of the ocean onto the land, the same water you brushed your teeth with this morning was part of that ocean. When the brontosaurus walked through lakes, feeding on plants, the water you get from the drinking fountain here at school was part of those lakes. There is approximately the same amount of water on earth today as there was when the earth was formed. Water is continually recycled in the earth's water cycle. Water gets recycled over and over again. Today, we are going to talk about how the water from billions of years ago has been recycled by the earth and is being used by each one of you today. The process of the earth recycling water is called the water cycle. As water goes through this process, it changes states. What are the three states or forms of water? Correct! The answer is solid, liquid, and gas. What is the water cycle? The water cycle is made up of five processes. Transpiration, evaporation, condensation, precipitation, and accumulation. Let's investigate how each of these processes work to keep water from billions of years ago moving around the earth. This is the water cycle. The water cycle is the continuous recycling of water on earth. From the oceans up to the sky and down to the land to be transported back to the oceans and sky again. Water is constantly moving due to the energy of the sun, transforming surface water into water vapor. The water vapor eventually forms clouds and clouds condense back into water droplets. When the water droplets become so dense in the clouds, the force of gravity pulls them back down to the earth where the cycle continues all over again. What is transpiration? Transpiration is the evaporation of water from plants. Plants need water to survive and they obtain it from the soil. But plants also sweat water out through their leaves during dry spells or sunny days. This is called transpiration. Do plants really sweat? Transpiration also cools plants and enables the flow of mineral nutrients from the roots. The amount of water lost by a plant depends on its size along with the surrounding light intensity, temperature, humidity, wind, speed, and soil water supply. James, P James Peter says, if possible, reward the yellow balloon next to the leaf. Plants like me release water during photosynthesis as I bring minerals up from my roots. Evaporation, the conversion of water from a liquid to gas. Evaporation is a critical component of the water cycle which is responsible for clouds and rain. Solar energy drives evaporation of water from oceans, lakes, moisture in the soil, and other sources of water. How does evaporation relate to weather? Evaporation is responsible 
for clouds and rain. Solar energy drives evaporation of water from the ocean. The evaporated water changes from a liquid form into water vapor or gaseous form. The water seen on the outside of a cold glass on a hot day is condensation. Condensation is the transformation of water vapor back into liquid water by cooling. Condensation is the changing of water from a gaseous state back to a liquid state in the form of clouds. How is condensation related to weather? Condensation forms clouds which can produce rain, hail, or snow. Evaporated water is warmed and rises into the air when it eventually cools and condenses to form clouds. Precipitation is a major component of weather and of the water cycle. Precipitation is responsible for depositing most of the fresh water on the planet. The rain, hail, or snow falling from the clouds due to the condensation of water. When clouds become very heavy with condensed water, the water is released in the form of rain, hail, or snow. Accumulation, the collection of precipitation into rivers, lakes, and oceans. The ocean is an integral part of the water cycle and is connected to all of the Earth's water reservoir via evaporation and precipitation processes. This completes the water cycle. Let's review the water cycle. Precipitation. Transpiration. Evaporation. Condensation. And accumulation. 